also out this week, we did I want mention... I because I'm in Friends. Are oh, you? Very good. I don't even know what that sentence meant. Joe Strummer, um, The Future is Unwritten. There is some a debate, incidentally, about whether this film is called The Future is Unwritten, Joe Strummer, or Joe Strummer, The Future is Unwritten. I think it's it, not an interesting debate, though, is it, that? OK, well, it's the new documentary by Julian Temple. No, you can't look it up, because on the IMDb it says Joe Strummer, The Future is Unwritten, but the distributors insist that the film is called The Future is Unwritten, Joe Strummer. Thank you, that's why I brought it up, but don't, you know, don't worry it's about... It's a Joe Strummer movie. It's a Joe Strummer movie. Uh, it's a fantastic documentary by Julian Temple, and I think it's a really, really good piece of work. Julian Temple kind of blotted his copybook very early on with The Great Rock and Roll Swindler, which I thought was a very poor film. He then went on to make Absolute Beginners, which was also a very poor film, but since then he's really redeemed himself with fantastic stuff like The Filth and the Fury which is a great documentary about the pistols and now Joe Strummer, The Future is Unwritten which basically gets together loads and loads of people who knew Strummer over his life, interviews them all around campfires because towards the end of his life Strummer became very very, you know uh, festival orientated. In fact, funnily enough, one of the things that the documentary really says is that he was an old hippie, despite the fact that he was, you know, known as the great godfather of punk rock. He was at heart an old hippie. I think the most interesting thing about the film is, if you know nothing about the Clash, you come away from it thinking that, that this was a really, really interesting guy who was so many different things to different people. On the one hand, he was a public school kid. On the other hand, he was he was a kind of uh, you know a folky who called himself Woody for a while and lived in a squat and ran the 101ers. Then he became Joe Strummer of the Clash. Then later on, he became the guy from the Mescaleros. And another period in his life, he was somebody who did soundtracks for in interesting independent films. And at, at no point did I find any of this boring, despite the fact that it's over two hours long. One thing which is quite funny is one sort of slightly elderly film critic who I respect very much said to me afterwards, I really didn't like the fact that none of these people were identified and I didn't know who they were. And part of me felt like, well, you know, hey, daddy-o, you know, if you're not hip to the groove, that's your problem. And another part of me thought, well, you know... Maybe it's an acceptable criticism, but you know what? Even at the age of 43, I felt, yeah, you've got to be young to understand this. It's 